Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Paula, for joining this digital conversation today. I've been um, looking very forward to it, um, to discussing together with you your 2007 paper on strategizing, um, which you wrote together with Julia Balagoon and David Seidel, uh, which was actually the first strategy as practice paper that I've read as a student that got me interested into the field. And that's why I'm very excited about talking to you about this. Um, first of all, I would like um, to start and would be great to hear from you some of the background um, context of the paper and um, yeah, how did the idea of this special issue emerge in the first place? Yeah. Um, so I always think this is one of those great serendipitous things which I hope COVID-19 will not stop in terms of uh, when you meet people face to face at a conference. Julia, David and I met in 2001 at Igor Sleon. Uh, when we had all just finished our PhDs and we were working in a not dissimilar area um, in terms of strategizing type things, which were all starting to kick off then. And the three of us got papers, different papers, into the first JMS special issue on micro strategizing. Uh, so we got to know each other because, you know, <laughs> that kind of a special issue can be quite um, a tournament, if you like, in that people who get an R&R &R, then get invited and we all went to URAM to present our papers and you're listening to other people's papers, which you've also seen in Leon. And now, you know, you're in competition with them. Will you get into the journal? But, uh, you know, those things can also become collaborations and friendships. And we became uh, friends. We were all at the same level. We started the EGOS um, Strategies Practice Standing Working Group. Um, and then we thought, you know, what's really needed, because by that time, strategist practice was starting to get articulated as a particular type of a theme and things. Um, we were running the standing working group and starting to get, you know, regular sets of papers and authors. We thought what we really need is a special issue on strategist practice, which is uh, micro strategizing sort of kicked it off, if you like, but wasn't actually the um, sort of specifically articulating itself as practice theory. So we looked around for what we thought would be a good host journal, keeping in mind that we were three people who were all still fairly, you know, uh, early to mid career at best. Uh, you know, I think I might, Julia and I might have just got our senior lectureships or something. Uh, David was still doing his habilitation. So we looked around for a journal that we thought would take us um, and that would also be interested. And um, human relations turned out to be a good fit in many ways. And um, we set off on our journey and we hoped that we'd get enough submissions and things being quite junior and that we'd get good ones, but we got, you know, some, some great papers from, so we got a really good round of uh, submissions. We learned a lot about editing through that process. And I think we were very happy with the set of papers that ended up. And in addition, it allowed us to spell out a bit of an agenda for the field. Um, the model that we used there, the practice practices and practitioners actually came from my 2005 book that I wrote, which was based on my thesis and which uh, Richard Whittington also developed a bit further in his 2006 paper. So, you know, that, that model was all sit already sitting there in my book in that sort of um, Venn diagram way. And then Richard sort of developed it into that uh, sort of plain style model he has. And we wanted to take some of that a bit further and say, so now let's spell this out as an agenda for people to go forward, crystallizing some of the things we were seeing. And it's been very successful paper. A lot of people have drawn on that. So I think, uh, the way it set out an agenda and the way it was quite inclusive um, has been attractive to people. It's very well cited. It's got over 1,400 Google Scholar citations. So uh, is that the sort of thing you were looking for? Yeah, thank you for the background uh, information. And as, and as you mentioned, a lot of people have drawn on this paper and cited it. And therefore, um, I was wondering from when you reflect on it, which would you say in which ways have scholars then used um, this paper in order to further push the boundaries that you outlined that exist in the field? So I think that the field has developed very uh, quite well in terms of practitioners, particularly the types of practitioners. So I think a lot of people liked the definitions we gave of what is strategizing and strategy as practice and how could we think about what are strategy practices. Uh, and that we put some sorts of definitions and boundaries around that, but we didn't close it down so that it became possible for, you know, thing, phenomena at different levels of analysis to be encapsulated as particular types of practices. And that's what we were aiming to do, to give people a framework within which to understand what they wanted to do, but not to box it up and say practice is this, but it is not that. 
uh, which I think in a sense would almost be a little bit contrary to the sort of social theorizing. So I, I think it gave a license to people to start to do that. Um, and secondly, I believe that we have had quite a bit of work on um, strategy practitioners building from there. I think we've had a lot of work on what you might call the uh, traditional strategy practitioners. So top managers, middle managers, some progressing focus on lower level managers, a uh, little bit. So we, we started to broaden the definition, if you like, of the question, who is a strategist? Uh, on the other hand, I think there's still room to go further in who is a strategist. Um, and at the same time, I think we possibly we were looking at how all theory might uh, inform strategist practice. What I think I'd probably say, reflecting on that and uh, with, with, with the benefit of my own experience, probably I've turned that question around in my own head, which is what a strategist practice have to say to known organization theories. So in that sense, um, when I'd frame a paper now, I'd frame it around something we know in strategy or organization theory. And I'd say, actually, the things you're not seeing in this theory are because you're, you know, we don't have a practice lens. Or the things that this theory needs to take it further, you need a practice lens and then bringing the practice lens in. So I guess I'd turn that question around slightly, but I, I think that's been a real strength. How people have brought organized or national strategy together with strategies, practice or practice theories to show the power of what practice can contribute. Um, so yeah, I think those are the things. Uh, there was a couple of papers in the special issue that I thought uh, also set out quite good agendas. The pluralism paper, I recall, I mean, also because it's one I've drawn on a lot myself, being very interested in paradoxes, you know, dialectical tensions, pluralism. Um, so I think that's been helpful. So I think we had a few nice empirical papers, but also some agenda setting papers. Um, the Mackay and Chia work, you know, so there was a few things there that I think also offer different avenues for thinking theoretically, as well as some lovely sound, strong empirical pieces. So uh, you pose five questions. The first, what is strategy? Uh, you pose the second question, um, who is a strategist, as you already mentioned? And um, third, what do strategies, uh, strategists do? Um, the fourth question was, what does an analysis of strategies and their doings explain? And fifth, how can um, existing organization and social theory inform an analysis of strategy as practice? Um, another question that came to my mind when I read the five questions was to hear from your perspective what you would say, which still remain the most challenging questions for um, SAP. So I want to take a couple of those together in so much as I think that uh, our question of what is strategy, who is a strategist, and what do strategists do? Um, I think that we in that paper, and perhaps we in strategist practice, particularly those of us who uh, practice theorists, saw the scope of practice theory to speak to big issues. And I mean, that's become more and more of a belief for me. Practice theory is a theory of the way the world works. I mean, it's how, how does the social order in which we live and breathe exist through our practices. So, you know, you can't really get a much bigger theory than that, that this is the way the world works. Uh, I, I suspect that because we wanted to focus on strategy and also because we want to, we want as people to, in, in, to publish and we want to call this strategy as practice, I think that that particular lens has been both helpful in that it's helped us to unpack, you know, what strategists beyond just top managers do and also look at top managers as people who are doing as opposed to just formulating and things. So I think we've got a lot more insights into the doing of top managers, quite a lot more into the doing of middle managers as well. So we, but, uh, uh, and perhaps we've identified middle managers more clearly as strategic actors. But I would say that our efforts to want to talk to strategy have perhaps boxed us up just a little bit into what was already considered to be strategy. So if you, if you like, um, if we want to go and look at what strategists do and what is strategy, and we take a genuinely broad view of that, that, that what people do in firms is what strategy is, and that is the proposition that we've articulated, then, I mean, so, so you are a strategist, I am a strategist, right now we are doing strategy uh, in that sense, in that what we do constructs what will be constituted as strategy, and there's an interplay between those. So, you know, why am I publishing? Well, I mean, partially because I'm a scientist and I'm curious, partially because the strategy of the organizations in which I choose to uh, involve and embed myself 
um, they instantiate their own successes through the publications I make. So I'm a strategist, I'm doing the strategy. I'm creating that thing as valuable. So in that sense, I think we've um, probably not gone far enough in strategies, practice, research to embrace a wider group of actors as strategists and therefore to have a wider understanding of what is strategy, strategy doing um, you know, who are, you know, what are the doings of strategy? If we widen our definition of who is a strategist and we go beyond saying, well, I know who's a strategist because if I go and look at a company, I say, what is your strategy or what is your strategic change? And then I follow that because, you know, as a doctoral student or a, a researcher, that's a definable question. I can go and ask that. I can go and find that out. I can go and follow it and I can go and find out maybe why it's going badly or well or whatever I can, but I've started with somebody else's definition of what is a strategy here. Um, which is the firm's definition and they think a strategy is X. If I really want to trace what emerges and comes to constitute strategy, I might have started somewhere else. And of course, I, I'm, I'm hesitant to overblow this in this talk because I don't want all doctoral students or indeed early career scholars to say, well, let's throw out the books and just go and see what's happening because you may find that you can't find something cohesive enough to tie it together. On the other hand, I do think there's scope for us to go a little bit wider in who is a strategist, and then we might see what is a strategy or what are the doings of strategy uh, more broadly. And I think in some ways that's been an aim for me in my more recent work. You may be aware I've started following global markets and looking at how those global markets increasingly, I'm looking at how they, uh, how the trading practices of markets can be used to fulfill, say, developmental or social goals. Now I consider that fantastically strategic, but it is bringing in a much wider set of actors uh, for me to look at. And so I think that's quite interesting. Uh, so I guess while I, while I don't want us to think that everything is strategy and therefore nothing is strategy, I'd be pleased if we continue to let, uh, you know, a few more of the thousand flowers bloom rather than um, shutting that down. Um, so that's a bit of a broad answer, as in which question, that interconnection of those questions is important to me. And I think also resonates with sort of recent things where people are calling for a flatter ontologies and, uh, you know, you, so you know, like um, the Seidel and, Bar uh, Seidel and Whittington piece on that. And of course, you know, uh, like David and Nicolini on the whole point of um, strategist practice, or well, practice theory, speaking to large scale issues. I believe that we can make more of, you know, that from a strategy perspective as well. Um, maybe this already answers um, my last question that I have. Um, I would have other questions, but maybe want to address this as well. So my last question would be, in what sense would you say, which particular topics then belong to this wider context that we need to address? Which particular question in your mind are most relevant or will be most relevant for the field in the future? Mm. Um, well, so I guess we're coloured by a bunch of things that are going on around us at the moment. Um, you know, so because I would have said, uh, so what would I have said six weeks ago? <laughs> I think we're all asking ourselves those questions. What did I think was important six weeks ago? Uh, and, and in that sense, I think I would have said, you know, be more open to, uh, and I, I wrote a paper, it's actually in the Handbook of Process Organisation Studies, which I think and Langley and Haritsukas edited, you know, the Oxford or the Cambridge Handbook of Process Studies. Um, and I wrote a paper in that with Jane Lee and Paul Spee, where we look at different types of um, strategies, uh, well, processes and, and how you can follow them. And there's scripted processes. And I believe that a lot of what we followed in strategies practice are what I would call scripted processes, things which we knew were going to happen and which had some sort of sequence of, of happening, if you like. A change program normally has some sort of initiative, you know, or, um, you know, if you, even if you're studying entrepreneurship, you know, people tend to measure it by when they go for Series A funding and these kinds of things. Um, and when we look at strategic planning or strategy implementation, there's a, pro a script that the organisation has that we as scholars already know we should be looking for. One of the things we discussed as being more difficult to examine is emergent strategy, when the organisation and the actors themselves don't know and you're trying to follow and find what's important. And another we do is what called strategy in the moment, where doings in the moment can be highly consequential. And I would have probably said I'd, I'd want to see more work being done on what is emerging and how doing in the moment 
creates that emergence or constructs that emergence at the same time as keeping in mind that if you want to follow things that are emerging in real time, you've got to be with them a very long time, um, which says to me, you know, perhaps you, 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 you persist with sites or phenomenal things of interest over the long term, even as they may have discrete pieces that you conclude and you write your papers, but you're continuing. And, and that's very much the approach I've taken myself over the last 10 years, I guess I've been studying a sort of set of practices and watching them unfolding and seeing what's emerging um, and, and sort of sequentially stopping at points to write about what I'm finding and seeing. Uh, and I sort of encourage that. As to what's important now, I think we're seeing a really interesting challenge to what constitutes business. Um, there's going to be a lot of people unemployed. A lot of the things that we think of as strategy and success, you know, I think we've been left without our clothes on really in terms of well, we don't have answers to this. Um, and really, what does constitute success after this? Um, I don't have an answer to that yet, but I think that we probably will have even broader phenomena around which action that is strategic, purposive, trying to be filled with meaning, uh, trying to be directed in some way, will be very important. So, and that will be strategy to me. So, I, th I, th I think we're kind of ripe to explore some of that with the practice theory lenses we have. Yeah, thank you very much for your reflections. And thank you also for connecting this 2007 paper with um, very current thoughts on uh, today and today's uh, situation, which will be yeah very um, useful for everyone to reflect on it, I think. You're very welcome. Thank you for asking me the questions and encouraging me to revisit the work. I mean, I remember being quite sort of early mid-career then and it was a challenging thing to do. Uh, so it's, I, I, all I would say is if any of you who are going to watch this video are also at that stage of your career, early or mid-career, find some other great people you really get on with at the conference around your level. You're going to grow hand in hand and become professors in, in due course. And in the meantime, you know, you've got lots of energy and you can, you can create the, the field of scholarship you want.